start oh hey there it is <laughs> we're live holy smokes hey you guys welcome to episode number 67 of mirrorless minutes uh mike and jamie here tonight and uh man it's been crazy busy for mike and i both and it's been pretty exciting uh we've got some giveaways to announce we've got an unfortunate giveaway because <laughs> the first giveaway that we did that person who won did not get a hold of us, so sadly that person has forfeited their totally awesome Olympus beanie, and it is getting passed on down to the next person in line. But it's a big, it's a big occasion. <laughs> Before we get going to that, what's up, Mike? How you been? <laughs> no, no, not bad, not bad. Uh, you know this this week has just been, you know, just cranked down with regular day job stuff. Uh, yeah. Last week was all uh, San Francisco workshop, which I'll you know talk a little bit about you'll in fact all my photo shares i shared 100 percent from that oh cool so uh yeah it uh what a, what a great workshop and you know as soon as i came home i threw out up between the minutes just about hey you, you need to go to workshops and yep. as soon as i did that we sold out our last spot that, our how awesome workshop that? sold out <laughs> so hey Bring, I wish we need a bell. I should have had the clapping ready. Yep. Oh yeah. But, yep. <laughs> but we we have sold out our other workshops. But yeah. this is this has been less than a month. No, yeah, it's super fast. So, so yeah. it's it's getting better. And we're not at like rock star stage yet. You know, we're <laughs> 13 minutes it's gone, but right. You know, that's okay. <laughs> no. It's cool. I mean, it's definitely uh I like the way it works for us anyways. You know, it's all yeah. organic. It's all like, you know, it's the real deal. So yeah. that's cool. and you know, it's yeah, I think as cool as we're everywhere. We're in um where was um, was it Manitoba, Canada? Yeah. One of the people coming from and then all over the country. I mean the United States. Um, yeah. Actually, I think it's only one person from Michigan. That's Which good. Is surprising. <laughs> you know, Michigan's right next door, and you'd be yeah. kind of thinking that maybe more would be coming locally. Right. But I guess it shows that people like us outside of our state. That's kind yeah. of nice to know. <laughs> yeah, I know. i got to remember to tell my wife that. So yeah. she thinks no one likes us. So <laughs> well, but, That's uh, great. All right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, man, I almost don't even know where to begin. Um, yeah. I'll just say hi to Jeff Bettman. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, if you see me looking off screen, it's because I'm looking at the chat window over me here. Me too. So. That's where I'm looking over there. I'm not, I'm not ignoring you, Mike, and I'm not ignoring <laughs> the audience here, and I don't have ADD too badly. Um, oh, man. So let's let's do the giveaway thing. Let's kind of start yeah. off talking about that right now. So apologies to Scott Robertson. He was the person that we drew – uh, two weeks ago for the Olympus beanie. And unfortunately, I never received an email from uh, Scott. So apologies for that. But that just opens the door for somebody else. And uh, Mike did the drawing this evening with the uh, the assistance of his wonderful yeah. wife. Yeah. And uh, the so person, her. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the winner of the Olympus beanie this week is Warren. And I hope I don't misspell or mispronounce your last name. I'm going to say Baverstock. Warren Baverstock. So, uh, Warren, hopefully you're watching this. And if you are, or, or listening in to the audio version, right? Um, just email me at info, I N F O, at jmacdonaldphoto.com. Um, or just seek us out through the Mirrorless Minutes Facebook page and, and message us through that as well. So, mm -hmm. we'd like to get that out to you. Um, so that is the uh, the winner of the beanie. Hopefully, we can give that thing away. We're getting so close to summer that I think we might have to open up the uh, might have the, to go international. Yeah, I know, just to send it, you know, to the other to the other hemisphere here. Um, right. And then, so we have another thing to give away this week because mm -hmm. you know we're doing this with every episode until we get through all the stuff Olympus has given us to give away. Um, so I drew, and I did this through the Mirrorless Minutes Facebook page. I did it a little differently this week. Um, and the winner is of the Olympus coffee mug. So I know it doesn't matter what hemisphere you're in, coffee's good year-round or tea. <laughs> um, and the winner is D. Davidson Zunker. So, D, hopefully you're a listener oh, to the really? show or a watcher. Yep. Is it really D? Yeah. You know hey, D? Was, well, yeah, she was in a workshop <laughs> three, four years ago. Really? Oh, that's well, fantastic. Well, super cool. So. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, then she gets the coffee mug. Hopefully she's huh. watching or listening. So that is awesome. Yeah. Um, I was going to announce like a really big giveaway, like the biggest giveaway we've done. Um, mm -hmm. But it's not quite ready yet. I did get a FedEx tracking number. So I'm going to make you guys sit tight <laughs> for two more weeks before it gets discussed. But mm -hmm. 
thanks to Derek's story of the Digital Story Podcast and of the uh, walk or workshops that Mike attends, you know, um, and so Derek is, everybody knows Derek. If you're a mirrorless photographer, even if you're not a mirrorless photographer, I'm sure you've come across Derek's story at some point in time. Um, I was listening to Derek's podcast and, uh, and I saw a post where he was at a wedding shooting, not as the photographer, but he just got to enjoy it as the citizen photographer, I think is, is the civilian. Photographer civilian photographer that it, yeah. <laughs> so you know that, that was the the term he coined for just somebody who gets to go and enjoy the wedding and just shoot it from just an attendee's perspective you know which mm -hmm. is probably something I, I can't even imagine what that's like i think every wedding i've been to other than my own i've been the one shooting the wedding but anyways so at some point during the whole thing derek mentions this really cool case that he had it was a leather half case that he had on his um i think he said he had it on his pen f and um, so I clicked the link that he had on Facebook and somehow, I don't know, I ended up with the same half case only for the EM5 Mark II and <laughs> I don't want it. I don't, uh, I shoot my EM5 Mark II with the grip. I don't ever take the grip off it. Um, so I'm stuck with this nice coffee colored leather half grip that um, has a little opening door on the bottom for your battery and it comes with a nice little leather wrist strap. It's a nice setup. Cool. It's, the name of the company is um, Bolin US, B-O-L-I-N-U-S. And uh, it's pretty sharp and I don't want it. So I want to give it to one of you guys. So this is how it works. This is where watching live. This is where it's going to be fun. Pay some dividends. So here's the deal. First, write down my email address, info, I-N-F-O, at J, like Jamie, Mac, like I'm the Mac, whatever, I don't know, Donald, J MacDonald, photo.com, info at J MacDonald, photo.com. That's my email address. Now, you want to win this? You got to be fast. You need to <laughs> jump up, run to the nearest mirror with your EM5 Mark II in your hand and take a selfie in the mirror of you holding your EM5 Mark II and email me that picture. First person to get me that email, I'm going to mail you the half case. Ready, set, go. Do it, do it, do it. We're going to lose viewers now probably. All right, so look, I'm going to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. no, I'm not. I, I'm, got some photos to share and some talking to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but somebody out there watching hopefully has an EM5 Mark II handy. And they're going to run to the mirror and snap that selfie. And by the way, one stipulation, and those of you that ran away didn't hear this, but you're going to hear it at some point. We're going to share that photo on Mirrorless Minutes. Uh, on, oh, probably yeah. on the Facebook page. We might even tweet it out. You're ours. You're our advertising property. So anyways, <laughs> it's worth it to get a free half case. Yeah, so absolutely. Fun. And those and, are cool. Those, those really class up the cameras. Oh yeah, you know, definitely. I mean, they would look great on the Pen Fs. I know that, but I think they would look great if you're gonna go minimal on your EM5 Mark II. Mm -hmm. uh, easily, it's a street camera. I know I was shooting with it all the time. Yeah, in the street. So definitely, you, I would. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if you don't get somebody to do it before the show's up. Oh, I have a feeling. You know. <laughs> so um, let me let me drag my email tab. I was gonna say yeah, the window so I can start yeah, watching. Get an email open. All right, so that's the giveaways this week. And like I said, I'm teasing you right now that there is a really big giveaway coming up uh, mm -hmm. on the next episode because I should have the giveaway product probably tomorrow. If I check cool. the FedEx number, I think it was supposed to come tomorrow. But trust me, you're going to want to tune in. And the product I'm giving away is also our going to be our newest show sponsor. So I told the sponsor I'd probably mention them tonight. Hopefully, they're not disappointed that I'm not going to mention them for two more weeks, but that's okay. It'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. It gives us time to tease it a little bit more and mm -hmm. kind of get some things in place for how we're going to work this giveaway. Yeah, exactly. And I think we can make it a, a good portion of the show, too, to talk about it. You know? Oh, yeah. It'll uh, definitely be you'll, you'll have some good ideas by then, too, to talk about it. So I think that'll be neat. Yep, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. So um, you mentioned uh, you know, how our workshop filled up. But you were just on yeah. an awesome workshop. And I yeah, yeah, it was great. I was uh, a co-led with Derek's story. And it's always fun. It's a fourth fourth year in a row we've shared the workshop. Uh, he teaches some. I teach some. Uh, I do a lot of the night stuff, obviously, a lot of the live composite. Um, flip everybody out. You know, it's every year. It goes without saying. Everybody goes, <laughs> I had no idea. And they've done it before. And, you yeah. know, when you don't do it, and you don't pull it out or go to that option. It just doesn't, uh, you know, you, you forget. And then all of a sudden you start putting two, 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 two and two together. And 
we just just did some great uh, live composite stuff uh, some of the class and it's always a small class with Derek. He keeps them very small, you know, never more than eight. Um, so it's, uh, I think it's real, it's a lot of fun when you have a few people. We do the same thing. You know, I mean, ours, I think Chicago, we're at 10, but that's still pretty small. Oh, yeah. Because well, there's two of us. Yeah. You know, I mean, with that, so it's like five people to one, uh, which is, you know, a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, we did that. And I think we made a lot of people explore because a, a lot of people shoot Olympus there. Uh, explore their cameras and you know we have uh, one one person larry here he went crazy on the double exposure oh, cool. thing he he didn't really know how to use it and then i think he shot everything the whole weekend in double exposure <laughs> <laughs> he was but he had some shots that were unbelievable cool uh yeah so i think that was fun and uh you know san francisco uh I don't know if I could ever live there. I can tell you that, but it's not my type of city to live in, but boy, is it a great place to shoot. You, you have to get there at least once to see it. It's just so busy and, and such a melting pot of the world. Really. It's not, you know, it's uh, definitely not American type things. And, you know, Chinatown is the real Chinatown is what yeah, I would call it. The original. Yeah. The one, the one that really reminds you of that. And, um, and then we had this torrential, uh, what I would call it, in fact, I called it there once for the class. I called it the Jamie McDonald storm chasing storm. <laughs> and they all laughed because they all knew who you were. And they all say, yeah, because there were two guys from Oklahoma. Oh, geez. And I said, if Jamie was here, I told him this. I said, he would not leave you alone. <laughs> all he would do is, where is it? Where, where should I go? Where should I go? <laughs> now, these two guys, both from Oklahoma, um, really never met each other before talk to each other and been in the same camera club circles no um but they they do know storms and uh <laughs> and i said jamie would love to be here for that but we had a storm that was just and you'll see it in my pictures it, holy cow i mean <laughs> but, but no lightning so it, maybe it isn't that good of a storm for you yeah <laughs> you don't have lightning we're gonna get some tonight though here in detroit are, are you getting anything Mm, I don't know. I haven't checked yeah. the radar, you know, and I didn't check the radar on purpose because because you knew he had the show to do. <laughs> yeah, and if I would have seen something coming, I would have been a little bit heartbroken that if I, would I see if I see a it. sign up there one week that says "Gone, gone Shooting." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll know. <laughs> a little blow up figure. <laughs> so, so, um, so great workshop. It sounds like yeah, yeah a lot of fun, a lot, a lot of fun, and it's a nice. Um, it's a nice primer for ours because our, ours is going to be a blast. I can't wait to get it. September seems so far off right now, doesn't it? It does. You know, you know, and and speaking of like workshops that are down the road, I get to tease another workshop. So mm -hmm. I'm actually going to do a workshop that doesn't have Mike at it. This is going to hey. be weird. I don't know how, I don't know how I'm, if I'm going to be able to pull this off. And, <laughs> I think I am, but uh, so um, I might have to get with Mike about some of the logistics because he's the man at it. Uh, Jeff Bettman just emailed me his selfie. So oh my gosh, I'll tell you what, serious? Jeff, you made my life so easy, dude. Yeah. You don't even know. I think I'm going to see you tomorrow night in Ann Arbor. Yeah, I know. I'll talk about here in a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, or I'll see you Friday in Ann Arbor. One of the two things I've got coming up. So I'll just hand deliver that. How about that? Um, so anyways, uh, Speaking of workshop, uh, so Mark Miller is a friend of mine, a fellow member of the Vanguard Pro team, uh, another member of the, the Nisi Filter Pro team, and an Olympus shooter as well. So he's got a lot in common with, you know, everything we've got going on here. And right. I've been wanting to do a workshop that involved the west side of Michigan. If you follow anything that I do or if you see like that picture back there, that's the west side of the state. You know, I love the west side of Michigan. I love the shoreline, the lighthouses. Um, it's just, I love everything about it. So I figured it's been far too long of talking <laughs> about it. It's time to just make it happen. So I decided to put together a workshop that's going to be with Mark Miller and I. He's going to co-lead this with me. Excuse me. And it's going to run for three days. It's going to be, um, well, we'll meet on Thursday night. Uh, which would be like the unofficial meet and greet, you know, kind of assemble and get together and potentially shoot. But, and then it'll be like an all day Friday and all day Saturday. And then probably like the first half of the day on Sunday. And we're going to start North 
on the west side of the state, somewhere up near um, Empire and the whole uh, Sleeping Bear Dunes region. And then we're going to work our way down and we'll end up ending the workshop potentially at the pier that you see behind me, depending on how their construction schedule goes. Because right now that catwalk is off the pier. Yeah. If it's done with construction, we'll end there. If it doesn't, it, if it's not completed by the time the workshop comes up, we're going to end a little bit further north of there at um, Little Sable Point Lighthouse. But the focus of this workshop is going to be lighthouses and capturing the coastline and there are a few other stops in between that we're not going to talk about on the show yet that'll get uh, hashed out in the details when we release this time frame for this is going to be probably like the second or third weekend in october so it'll probably be close cool. to a month after yours and mine mm -hmm. in chicago is done um it'll be fun and that time of year is really interesting because you either are going to have great warm weather or you're going to have really sketchy, ominous skies. Either way, they both play really well um, with the shoreline and what we've got planned for some of the lighthouse stops that we're going to do. So with that said, if you're interested in lighthouses, if you're interested in the Lake Michigan shoreline or both, uh, yeah. stay tuned. It's going to be on the Mirrorless Adventures meetup page is where we're going to launch this workshop just like the workshops mike and i've been doing and the solo ones that mike's done in the past so yeah that's all well that sounds fantastic um i mean especially from that that type of uh, there's so many people asking for that all the time too yeah hey we yeah. want to get out there we want to see what you, you know you know about that side of the state yep and you know speaking about mirrorless minutes even though our um chicago uh workshop is sold out Join Mirrorless Adventures. Make sure you still join, and you can get on the wait list. I mean, oh yeah, believe me, we want everybody that signed up to be there. But sometimes things happen, and somebody has to pull out. You know, all of a sudden you could you could be the next one up. So, yeah. um, and when they release that, when someone does go off, they release it to everybody. You so you could jump on really quick. Yep. Um, and then the other thing too with Mirrorless Adventures, I'm actually doing another. Uh, this isn't really a workshop, but it, but it's certainly a photo walk, and yep. I'll help everybody like it's a workshop. But uh, at Eastern Market on uh, May, boy, I should know the is date. Is that Flower Day? It is. It's Flower Day. I believe it's Ooh, May 21st. That's uh, awesome. I'm thinking, and it is crazy. Yes, it Eastern is. Cool. Market is insane, but it is a good insane. Yeah. People are happy. There's flowers everywhere. Um, and it's great for street shooting, fun for getting people to pose. If you like doing street portraits, everybody likes to pose for them. Flowers are great. Uh, you know, we'll shoot for a couple hours, two, three hours, and I'll answer any questions for sure, but I'll be shooting along too, uh, you know, with everyone there. And, and there's open spots. Right now, I think I said I'd take up to 15. And you know what? If it fills up, I think there's a 13 right now. If it fills up, I'm likely to just put on another five. I mean, because I want people to get a chance to get out there. And uh, if you've never been to Eastern Market and all you do is hear about it, you, you, it's so much fun to be with other photographers there, too. Yeah. You know, yeah. you can uh, sit and get some lunch. And, oh, man, it's a good day. And hopefully it's nice, like, 75 degrees. That's what yeah. we're hoping for. <laughs> you know, and that's a good point that you bring up, that Mirrorless mm -hmm. Adventures isn't just about the paid workshops that we do. Um, I know that's something that I'm planning on doing as well this summer once the camping season gets rolling. Mm -hmm. I tend to spend every weekend on the west side of the state. So I kind of would like to get a group together, probably through Mirrorless, I can't even talk, <laughs> Mirrorless <laughs> Adventures on the meetup page there and organize an astrophotography shoot on the west side of the state at one of the lighthouses. Um, you know, I like to spend time on the piers and they make a great uh, foreground piece of interest for long exposure night yeah. photos. Uh, and I, there's a couple of spots where we can shoot where, well, the, again, I point to that one back there. I've got a great Milky Way shot of the Milky Way rising over the lighthouse. So if you're interested in something like that, uh, again, subscribe to the, or join the mirrorless adventures page because I'll be posting that on there as well. Yeah. Yeah. And no cost to join the mirrorless Please. adventures. Yep. It's free. Just join. Yep. I mean, and, and believe me, we're not blasting out emails to people or anything like that. Nope. There's, there's not time. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know? I mean, to do all that stuff. So definitely got to join. Yeah. So let's talk about what you're doing. 
tomorrow, which I was oh, supposed boy. to do. Until I Holy smokes. Yeah. Work, work has taken over my life uh, right. this week. But uh, Hammer Mall celebrating a big, big birthday. Yeah, they're celebrating their big one-year birthday. And um, they've got a lot of stuff going on. And I guess I'm going to be doing a couple of things there over the next few days. The first thing is going to be tomorrow night. I'm going to be there helping out with a drink and click. So if you're anywhere within driving distance of Ann Arbor, and it doesn't matter if you're in an Olympus user or a mirrorless shooter or not, you should just go to the drink and click and just check these out. <clears throat> They're a very exciting, uh, fun event. So uh, the premise of it is the organizer, Juan Carlos Gonzalez, uh, he's the founder of Drink and Click. Mm -hmm. He sets this up, organizes it with a local bar. And Juan will usually bring in some lighting apparatus, you know, some off-camera lighting. And uh, this is going to be sponsored by Olympus this time. So there will be Olympus cameras there. I'm going to guess at least one or two EM1 Mark IIs. And uh, usually have some models there and a couple of different, you know, um, stations. And you can just kind of hang out, socialize, have a few drinks, take some photos, check out the new camera gear. And I'll be there with... I think I hear Chuck Garcia is coming from Olympus. Is He'll Chuck be there. Be there? Yeah, yeah, that's what I heard. Um, so yeah. that's going to be a blast. So that's one event, and that's tomorrow night. Um, mm -hmm. If you're curious about it, if you're not following Camera Mall on Facebook, just check out – just do a search for Camera Mall, and uh, they're the only one in Ann Arbor. So you should like right. those guys. They're a great store. So that's Thursday. And then Friday, I'll be right back up there again after my work day is done. And this time it's going to be for something right up your alley. It's the uh, live mm -hmm. composite. Yeah. So I'm going to be going over live composite with, uh, I'm not sure how many people are showing up to this one or not, but I've been getting a lot of questions from people. So it sounds like a fair amount will be there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I've got a few different things planned to showcase, you know, um, what live composite is and how it works. I just have a short presentation that I'll give that, explains what it is to those who don't know you know anything about it hopefully there'll be some non olympus users there who are curious because i just love watching people's minds go <laughs> you know, when they see it but i'm um, gonna set up a couple of different stations to shoot at one will be kind of street side to show people um you know getting the trails from cars driving by and people with their cell phones out glowing as they walk by um, and then another one will probably be like in this alley that's near the, um, the near the camera store called Graffiti Alley. And I've got all kinds of cool gear to bring with me. I've got over here to my side, I've got my pixel stick ready with some cool graphics loaded into it. And I've got just all kinds of LED strips and bouncy balls that light up. Just all kinds of fun stuff, you know, to light paint with. So it'll be definitely a good time. And again, that's uh, sponsored by Camera Mall. So, and that's Friday night. It's going to be busy. <laughs> Yeah, I was just thinking nights. about that. We we probably should do a live composite inside a bowling alley, one of the dark bowling alleys at night with all the the, the glow in the dark stuff yeah. that they do. Yeah, that yeah, would be well, kind of cool. That'll, that'll, we'll have to try to figure that out. Yeah, we'll call it comp and bowl or something. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> there you go. It'd be, it'd be interesting. Uh huh. Yeah, for sure. All so right. You, uh, what do you else you want? You want to do picture share? Sure. We can share pictures. Want to, want to go there? All right. Well, before uh, I'll I'll start. I just want to talk real quick about this book. Good I, call. I wanted to get this out and get the. Uh, but uh, so uh, Robert Penchik, if and I, I'm not sure if how many people know him or not, but but he definitely shoots Olympus. Yeah, and it's likely because he works there. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> um, but uh, Robert's a great photographer, and and he's put together this book called Caribbean Faces and Places. And I just got it today, just in time, and it's amazing on his trip in the Caribbean. Just some beautiful pictures, and we'll put a link to the show notes uh, about it. And and one other sort of cool thing is like on the back, this written here. Uh, he asked me to write, uh, you know, a, a little blurb about his book on the back. And that's pretty cool to see your name on the back of the book. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, check it out. There, is, there are some sharp, sharp pictures. And I think the publisher did a great job putting it together for him, too. But he's a very accomplished photographer. And and I think uh, he's he's on most of the groups that we're in anyway. So you, a lot of you guys might see his postings all the time, I think. So you have to check that out. And uh, let's see, let's, okay, so I said I was going to go to San Francisco here and do yeah. just nothing but San Francisco. 
Oh, I don't want to start wow. there. I know yeah. I want to start here. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first rain. That's next one is the second rain a day later. So this this one, I again, um, I'll tell you, this is down right at Union Square, and it, it's a little bit deceiving. First off, you absolutely cannot see it's just such pouring rain sideways pouring rain this guy is out there playing you know his trumpet in just absolutely pouring rain but what you don't realize and this is a little deceiving here is he's up about four foot that's about a four foot uh uh stand that he's sitting on there cement stand and just a great job and the reason two things he was leaning back is one is to hold himself from the high winds and the second was obviously kicking out the notes um but again, I think two things I would say about this. One is if you're street, you know, shooting and you've got performers, always give them money. This guy, I, I pulled out five bucks I, just for him to stand there and do that was amazing. And, uh, um, but more, more importantly, uh, you know, I had on the, the M1 Mark II with a 25 millimeter prime. And this is great street shooting for, for that. I mean, all weather sealed, a prime, an Olympus prime weather sealed. Uh, it's, what a great night uh, of shooting and i know a lot of people might have shied away from it but there was no way we were i was going to and we and this paid off lots of cool shots there that night and then the next day actually it was the next let's see that would have been late thursday night this is uh friday actually this is saturday but during the day it the heavens opened up and it just poured uh this girl's waiting for the light here we were on the reason we got so clear in that is we we're on a streetcar and you know we we're on a streetcar facing the outside so the rain she was getting there we were getting on top of us without umbrellas so needless to say we were soaked very very soaked but i just just had to show this picture just the clarity this is the 12 uh 12 to 100 uh on the m1 mark ii in her eyes in that uh what a, what a great shot you know to pull focus through all that rainstorm really neat and then you heard me talk about on sunday we were in chinatown and if you've watched the show before or seen some of my posts you know i like to do this this thing i got uh called uh, uh first person shooter sort of like the video games and that like halo um but i always like to get involved so i'll get my hand in there somewhere they're always handing out stuff uh, there. So I've got my uh, free pot stickers <laughs> thing here. But I, I like to get super close with the body cap fisheye because nobody even knows you're really even taking a shot. you got the EM, or I'm, and in this case, I had the Pen F. I had the Pen F on silent, and you got that little lens. They don't even really know what's going on there. So really a neat uh, day, super bright and sunny after all that rain. Here's one where we started. This was the streetcar that uh, maybe we weren't on this streetcar, but the next one up. And this is one of those surprise things. It was absolutely pouring here. People are waiting in the rain way back here. And you can't tell, but way in the back and the bottom, we're waiting to get on the streetcar. And this is one of those surprise shots after I brought it into the light room and started looking at it. I was so happy because look at the straight through the window, the window you've got the streetcar in front of it heading up the street right in the dead center. So everything centers from that line straight through. Really happy with that shot. You know, it's, a, it's one of those little, uh, we call it Easter eggs, I guess, inside there that were really neat uh, to see that day. So again, standing in that line, caught this shot. And, oh, man, I can, this is with the 12 to 100. I've got to be 50 feet away, I would say. And uh, I pulled the dad's face out of this because the, the kid says the kid's face with that donut says everything. Um, and, and, you know, it's a dad sitting there with him. But off to the side, you don't see is his sister who had like some little fruit plate or something. And I think he was saying, I got the donut and you get the fruit. <laughs> so this I just can't believe how clear and that stuff that is through a pouring rain, too, that was coming down that day. So really cool. Great, great lens combination that em1 mark ii with the 12 to 100 all weather sealed and uh this is the next one the last one is with the, the 25 again prime on that very late night and i saw this broken umbrella and you know whenever you get a chance to get something up close and at the same time this guy walked into the frame obviously you, you don't have any clarity on the guy and you got the bokeh in the back because you got the 25 millimeter uh, this was definitely shot at one at one point two, 
Um, but I just love this shot because I call this one like, you don't fool with Mother Nature. I mean, everybody's umbrellas were breaking that night. And I, it was so cool to just to get that feel of the street, the bright street, and, you know, the glistening of the ground and that broken umbrella uh, and the guy without an umbrella there. So really tells a story, I think, for that night. But uh, all right, that's it. So the uh, the streetcar shot. Yeah. Said something. <laughs> okay. So did you was did you have to process that in post to get that exposure to show up? Because no, the the actually dude, that window that the, to hard. see the road was cool. There was so much shadow on the back of the streetcar that I brought out. Okay. Definitely in Lightroom, the shadow of the car. But man, when I saw that, I thought that was just uh in the camera when I was looking at it. I thought, oh, yeah. it's just you know, bright light shining in through the streetcar, and I've probably overexposed it. And sure enough, as soon as I drop the highlights down in that one area, boom, yep. there's there's the next streetcar right up above. That's so I went, oh, God, this is great. It's an Easter egg. Nice. <laughs> and then that little kid with a donut. <laughs> so you just made the case right there for yeah. a telephoto lens for street shooting. I know somebody out no there doubt. is going to be like, you know. Ooh, I know. It's not street shooting. Bro. Yeah, I know. Nah, I don't know. That shot was freaking cool. So. No, man. I I absolutely went went against that whole premise too. That whole yep. weekend, I said, you know what? I don't care. We're yep. pulling out this twelve to one hundred and the twenty five, and and if, so if I want the prime, I got the twenty five. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Rule. There, there are no rules. Yeah. Right. Exactly. They're all, they're all in your head. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, lots of fun. San Francisco, great place to be, rain or shine. So. I don't have nowhere near as many photos to share. I didn't go <laughs> okay. anywhere quite exotic as uh, San Francisco, but. Um, <laughs> They're mostly uh, just morning shots. Actually, they're all morning shots except for two that are evening shots. Um, the first shot here is just me practicing what I preach constantly, which is give yourself a little bit of extra time. Sometimes the extra time comes in the form of a flat tire. And so <laughs> I knew I was going to be running a little late anyways, having to change a tire, which is not fun and brogues and dress pants you know it's kind of a stupid thing to be doing on the side of the road but hey whatever when the sunrise looks like this you put the tire on the back burner and change it after you get the shot so that's basically what i'm doing here is uh taking a photo before changing my tire and then heading into work uh shot with the the man this is like the go-to combo anymore so it's the em1 mark ii the 7 to 14 and my Nisi reverse graduated neutral density filter, uh, which makes sunrises and sunsets like a mega treat to shoot. Now, this is not straight out of camera. I wish it was straight out of camera. It'd be pretty impressive if you could pull that one off. But this is just a single exposure and then just doing uh, hue saturation and luminance channel adjustments in Lightroom. So not even in HDR. It's kind of fun to be able to do that. Um, this next shot was shot again exact same combo as the previous shot mark ii 7 to 14 nisi reverse grad filter and i was out shooting the sunrise with the guy i'm going to be doing that workshop with this fall mark miller um, i invited him out to go do some shooting and then do what well it's the only way to plan a workshop we went to panera and sat down and started planning the workshop like mike and i do uh, so I invited Mark to meet me at this location that I pass by every day on my way to work. And it's just an incredibly cool spot. Um, and there was this weird, some sort of, it's a weed, basically. It's not a tree, but it's like this ghostly, weird, white, dead plant. And it was kind of sitting off to the side. And I just maybe bumped it a little bit with my foot and brought it a little bit more into my frame and just kind of walked around and set it up into the shot. Um, just experimenting with putting something in the foreground. I don't know that it necessarily works for me, but um, I just wanted to give it a shot. The next photo, though, was I didn't move all these rocks into place to make the shot. <laughs> they were there, and I planned this shot out pretty far in advance, uh, knowing where the sun comes up, having driven past this spot for years, and seeing this rock wall that was made by the farmer pulling rocks out of these fields here over the years. Uh, I was excited to get out there for sunrise and and pull this shot off. And again, same combo, Mark 1 or EM1 Mark 2, uh, 7 to 14 at 7 millimeters. So that's why you get like the really wide perspective of the, of the rocks back here down in the corner. And that same Nisi reverse graduated neutral density filter. Uh, again, not HDR, not a bracketed shot, single exposure. Um, 
last Friday, I got out of work and decided to head to the camper to get it prepped for the camping season. And while over there, I figured I'm only 15, 20 minutes away from the lake shore, so I'd be a fool not to go and catch a sunset. So that's exactly what I did. Um, you guys are going to get sick of hearing it, but UM1 Mark II, 7 to 14, and the Nisi filter. But I also have an ND filter on it as well because that Nisi reverse grad only is dark in the center and then just kind of fades out to being not so dark at the top. Excuse me. And it's clear at the bottom half. So what I had to do was put an, um, an ND filter on top of the Nisi reverse grad so that I could slow my shutter speed down. And also having on the EM1 Mark II, the ability of the low ISO to be a 64 ISO also means you can extend out that exposure time quite a bit further without having to stop down to like a ridiculous number like F22 or something. So this was actually at like F8. And I think I ended up getting a two second exposure off of this, which was plenty long enough to ghost out the waves rolling in. And the last shot, it's all about changing your perspective. If you look at this shot on the left hand side, you see these pilings working their way out into the lake. Just by moving over and centering up with them, this is the shot you get from there. Um, literally walked 15 feet and completely different photo. Same setup again, same ND filter, same Nisi reverse grad, same everything. Although this one is not at seven millimeters. This one is all the way out at 14 because this is the craziest thing ever. The seven to 14 actually has more focal ranges than just seven millimeters. Everybody who's got the seven to 14 wants to get it stuck at seven millimeters and I'm as guilty of that as everybody else. But in this case, I actually zoomed all the way out there to 14 millimeters. So, just remember that, you guys. If you have the 7 to 14 or the 9 to 18 or the 12 to 40, um, you know, you are more than capable of moving beyond its widest point. So that's my tip today. <laughs> if you want to go wide, you can take it off of wide every once in a while. That's yeah. Those, that's, I love that rock wall one. Oh, thanks. That, that, that one is awesome. I mean, that's got like, that doesn't even look like it's in Michigan. I know that's got a weird I'm channeling. Sort of, I'm trying to channel Phil Norton here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, no, you're using that thing that Phil Norton made or whatever. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. really the only way to get these, right. um, the square filters or the Nisi, you know, filters on the seven to 14 is with that filter holder yeah. that Phil Norton makes. So I guess if anybody's watching this and doesn't know what we're talking about as far as, you know, how to get a filter on the 7 to 14 or whatever, just feel free to reach out at any time and I'll point you in the right direction because being able to put a filter on the 7 to 14 totally changes what you can do with that lens. Right. Um, Andrew Oki wants to know how easy is it to take the filters on and off the lens? It's really not hard. Um, it's a little, they, the filters slide into the holder a little snug, but Filters aren't cheap. Those ones really aren't cheap at all. So you don't want them to slide in too easy. You want them to be in there nice and firm, and they are. But it's not anything that's going to make your photography any more difficult. It's easy to get the adapter on. It's easy to get the filters in it. It's just just another process. Yeah, I think once you do it once or twice, you, there's a certain way you're holding it and making it work right. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty quick know, at it now. Yeah, I was going to say, you probably get pretty darn quick at it. Actually. Yeah, they're actually faster than doing than using a round filter. Round filter, you're threading, oh, yeah. and half the time, if you don't get it threaded just right, you're kind of fiddling with it with these. It's You're just mm -hmm. sliding it into a slot and then adjusting you know, it up or down from there. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Dale Yurick said he's about to order a filter kit from Phil for the 7 to 14. <laughs> You're going to love it, dude. <laughs> it's yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, that is. Yeah, that's something I need to get that thing too. Yeah, it's I nice. Think every time I see your pictures, I go, yeah, shoot. <laughs> something. And then I, then I think, well, maybe there's even a way to use that in the street. I know I could do a lot of blurring of people. Oh, totally. <laughs> Definitely. I, could. Definitely. I mean, I really think you could get some really cool uh, sunset shots where the when that sun is just crashing into the city between buildings you oh, get some gosh, movement yeah. you know like in chicago all the people crossing the streets so that would be great I, I i'm pretty sure we're probably going to have some of those filters on the chicago workshop yeah so Something let, yeah, tells me yeah, let me talk about that for just a quick second yeah. so um so nisi filters they're actually their u.s distributor i can um mm -hmm. mark miller alex mcclure myself we've 
all been kind of taken under their wing. I don't know if it's like a sponsorship or an ambassadorship or whatever, but I know that my contact there has told me that, um, that he'll be glad to work with us on workshops. Um, mm-hmm. So I think what that's going to mean is that if you're interested in these filters, which you probably should be kind of interested in filters by now in your photography, and if you're not, you will be soon, um, we'll probably have these filters on hand. Um, I'll try to make sure that we can get a couple of kits there for people to check out. It does mm-hmm. change things a lot. It's um, you can't replicate everything in post, man. I used to think that I used to really think I could, well, I'll just do it in Photoshop. I'm good at Photoshop. Well, we had a here. You're going to love this. I didn't tell you this. Uh-oh. We had a real big discussion at the workshop in San Francisco about you. Oh no. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> Cause no. And then, cause you were putting out some of these pictures when I was in San Francisco and I was showing people and I said, look what Jamie's doing. And being, oh, you could just do that. You know, after you do that, I said, yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I don't think you can because I yeah. used to shoot an icon and I had filters for that. <laughs> yeah, I used to think so. And you pretty- really, I mean, you can try to do things with some HDR and all of a sure. sudden you start cooking it too much. Yes, you do. And it really looks crappy. Yeah, you and know. It, you know, when you come in, it's just like anything else. When you come in with, you know, 90% of it done in your camera. Yeah. You got a small amount of work to do and you can make it look extraordinary. And that's, I had a, a gentleman come over the other day. Um, this guy, Derek, he just recently made the switch over to Olympus. Good mm-hmm. guy. Good guy. Um, <laughs> and we were talking about the filters and he's really interested in the Nisi filters. Um, and we got to talking about it. And that's exactly what I told him, you know, that at this point, when you use the filters, you're 90% done. You're pretty much there with the photo straight out of camera, which a lot of these photos I've, I've shared, you know, not these ones today, but I've got other Lakeshore photos that I've shared that people, I've had people argue with me, you know, <laughs> you did something. I'm like, no, look at, here's the raw file. You know, <laughs> they look that good coming out of the camera. And then if you decide to put it into post, you don't have to, you know, like you said, you don't have to cook it as much, you know, you can just start just little adjustments on the hue saturation yeah. um, and luminance sliders, you know, and adjust individual color channels a little bit not anything close to doing an HDR, which introduces like artifacting and right. noise and things like that. So, and I'll tell you what, I've tried so damn hard to make a long exposure in Photoshop and it just don't work. So, yeah. um, so you, can, you can't do everything in Photoshop. It'd be yeah. nice. Yeah, um, exactly. exactly. So man, we've, we've busted past we've our 30 minute long. mark. We sure I did. I know we've gone long. So um, I'll just reiterate one more time if I can find my little uh, text document here. Um, don't forget to check out the uh, the show notes here to take a look at uh, Robert Penchik's book yep. because Robert, not only is he an awesome photographer, he's a great guy anyway, mm-hmm. So, um, but his work definitely yeah. deserves your, some attention. Um, and our winners. So the beanie, the beanie that just won't go away. We can't give the darn thing away. Hopefully this time we will. Warren Baverstock or Baverstock. Hopefully you're listening, dude. Um, and then D. Davidson Zunker gets the coffee mug. It's not one of those gigantic ones. It's one that everybody can oh, use. You know, right. it's a glass I of coffee. Had it sit there. Yep. There you go. Oh, right there. Boom. There you go. Get that Perfect. Get there. <laughs> there you go. So we've got two winners. Um, oh. And how could I, I'm not going to forget Jeff Bettman because yep. I get to hand deliver this one. If I could oh, hand cool. deliver everything, man, <laughs> so, I'd be a happy dude. Save on the shipping. Yeah. I, I just need somebody in Iceland to win something for me to hand deliver. <laughs> and if they want to pay for my way over, even there better. <laughs> so uh, I guess with that said, we can kind of close out the show with one last thing. Um, don't forget to use, if you want that mug or the beanie yeah. or a hat, like an Olympus hat, like maybe like that. Um, mm-hmm. you can use promo code MM gear, like mirrorless minutes, gear 10 MM gear 10 and not 10% off. Uh, I'm not sure how much longer that code goes for. And, um, uh, end of April, 30th end of April, man, yeah. we're going to have to get that one extended. So yeah, probably it goes every two weeks and we can only okay. give it out twice. So <laughs> MM gear 10, 10% off, at least probably covers your shipping costs, you know, or your mm-hmm. sales tax or both. Um, I guess that's it. Uh, you guys take care. Thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks for watching. Tuning in. Good live comments tonight, too. Don't forget to subscribe and like and all that good yep. stuff. See you guys. See ya. Did I hit stop? We're still live. Still live.